it may we added the option to add points in time to the data that we have. In June, uh, the option for adding locations, geo coordinates. And in July, we added support for Wikivoyage language names. So Wikivoyage is the first sister project besides Wikipedia that was uh, starting to support. And it went very smoothly just a few weeks ago. So how does Wiki, uh, Wikidata look like? For every topic that has a Wikipedia article, we basically uh, have items that represent these topics in Wikidata. So we might, for example, say, oh, this is our item for Hong Kong. It basically represents the topic of all those Wikipedia articles about Hong Kong. We have a label for it, Hong Kong. We have a short description, basically a gloss for it, uh, des describing Hong Kong, and a few other aliases we are using in order for better search. What we have on the bottom of the page, oh, by the way, we have it in many languages. So what you see here is in different languages. And this is a little secret hidden feature of Wikidata. You have to, uh, if you're logged in, and put a Babel box on your user page saying which languages you speak. Wikidata will actually show you the labels in those languages as well, and you can edit them directly. You don't have to go over and add a social language in order to edit. So you might want to use that if you're Wikidata. The, um, the one thing we started with on Wikidata was to collect all the languages. So at the bottom of the page, we have this long list of 151 Wikipedia articles that are all about Hong Kong. And what happens now is that instead of having those links in the Wikipedia articles themselves, as it was until February, basically, now the, uh, these pages uh, um, Wikipedia all pull the language links from Wikidata. They basically ask, hey, I'm the page Hong Kong. Do I have any language links in other languages? And Wikidata says, yes, you have quite plenty. Here's the list. And then Wikipedia displays those on the page. If you want to change something, you do it in this one central place. You don't have to go through all the 151 languages in order to add the one new article you created in your local language, or if you change something. There's a question already? The conflict, if there's a conflict between the... Sorry? If there's a conflict between the plan provider and the and a conflict between the articles. So the question was if there's a conflict between the language links and the local article and in the big data. Yes. No problem, the local article always wins. So the, no Wikipedia is forced to use this information and can simply keep to their own mapping if they prefer. Okay, after the language links were there, we started to add the possibility to add statements. So for example, this means these connections between items that I was talking about. Hong Kong is connected to Asia by the connection, by the content, by the continent property. It's connected to Chinese and English by the official language property. And then we have the flag image, the flag of Hong Kong coming from comments, it shares borders with Guangdong, and so on. So we have all this structured information about Hong Kong. The nice thing about structured information and having a lot of labels in different languages is you can simply switch the language. So we have here the English view, here's the Chinese view, here's the uh, Arabic view, and all of those are the viewing on the same database. So we don't have uh, this is the Uzbek view. We don't have those statements in different knowledge base. There is no Wikidata in English. There is no Wikidata in Chinese. There is only one single Wikidata that, connect, that contains all the knowledge from different um, Wikipedias. And when you edit something, for example, in Uzbek, it will be available immediately in Chinese. So you are changing, for example, the mayor because the new mayor was elected it will be available in all the 250 languages of the support. You can also deal with contradicting information. So what we have here, for example, is the population of Mumbai. And the official number is 12 and a half million. Um, and the estimate by the UN is actually 20 and a half million. So the difference alone in the population of Mumbai is, is 8 million. We don't have to decide what the true number is in the data office. And this will be a long discussion since we are multilingual project is like a problem. So what we do in Wikidata is basically we provide you with the possibility to have both of them inside, and you can provide sources for those. So we can say, oh, there are two sources for the 20 and a half million number. There's one source for the 12 and a half million number. You can take a look at them and see um, who is claiming this kind of number. And based on that, you can uh, trust the number more or less. It's the same way that we do in Wikipedia. We have those, um, we don't, 
try to find a consensus on reality. We don't find the one proof about the population of Bombay, but we want to find reliable sources and we cite those numbers. A source might look like this, for example, at, a, at the title of a paper, the authors, the DOI, and so on, having this information um, um, supporting the statement that was actually taken out for. So this is how Wikidata looks like, basically. All the data we have inside is available in many different ways. We have a REST API where you can read and write the data. We have full dumps of everything. Um, we have a number of formats available, JSON, XML, RDF. All the data that we have, all the structured data that we provide is available under CC0 license, which means you can do anything with it. We provide stable IDs in form of URIs for all the items that we have. And they also fulfill the link open data standards, so you can just with standard software in order to access the data from Wikidata. This data is used already in a number of different things. So don't, um, when you see the following screenshots, don't forget that those tools have been developed in the last few months. Based on the site, it's only there for, uh, for about half a year. The first demo that we had was called Reason Reasonator. What Reasonator does is just taking the data and displaying it in slightly nicer form. So this is the page of Mozart based on the Wikidata data. It just shows the image of the person, signature, the other um, identifiers, family relations, and so on, um, of Mozart, coming directly from Wikidata in a different way. We have so many family relations that actually someone wrote a visualized in form of a graph to represent um, genealogical information. So what you see here is the family of Johann Sebastian Bach and how they're related to each other. When I saw this demo, I was, oh, that's awesome. Let's put in the Queen of England. The next thing, my browser crashed. Um, <laughs> and someone wrote a genealogy viewer that can deal with a little bit more information than this one. And what it did was an implementation in SVG and in the browser. And the Queen of England has quite a big family. So this is a screenshot that you see in, after one month of the project. And so this is a number of the family members of the Queen of England. Actually, it's a very small detail out of the whole data set. <laughs> According to Wikidata, we're probably lacking a lot of information still. Okay, what else can we do? Oh, this is a lovely demo. Um, this is an atlas of India. And instead of um, just writing down the names of the different provinces into the atlas, it connects to Wikidata and says, Oh, this has an item in Wikidata, or which here, Andhra Pradesh has an item in Wikidata, and it gives a number that it has in Wikidata. And because of that, you can actually just simply switch the Atlas's language. So this is the one in English, here in Russian, Hebrew, uh, Chinese, and so you can simply switch with the languages. You don't have to know those languages at all, but you can provide your information, if they're structured like this, immediately in 300 different languages, simply based on Wikidata. What you see here is a visualization of what happened after we switched on the geographical data point in Wikidata. So the first 40 days of entering geodata in Wikidata is being shown here, and how the world is basically um, being entered into our project. And at some point, you see China suddenly lightening up it's actually pretty amazing to see. So this is the current uh, view on the data. Another thing is, okay, we have those geo points, but seriously, we had those already when we had Wikipedia, right? We had the geo points uh, in the different um, articles, we had the geo points in comments. So really, it's not really amazing part. The really amazing part is that we also know about connections between those items. So we can actually create, for example, a map of Italy that displays all the com uh, municipalities of Italy and what they are connected, what they are bordering to. So you basically get a triangulation map of Italy based on the data. There's nothing lying underneath of this. This is simply visualization of Wikidata data, not using any external uh, data in order to support that. Another view, this is of East Asia, displaying the municipalities inside of China. You can see here China, you can see Southeast Asia here, India, there and uh, the different, uh, and the yellow lines are belongs to or part of relationships. 
So you can see here sometimes connection to a country like in India, here mostly to um, different municipalities inside of China, just a little bit of Japan over there. And also these visualizations coming from people from Wikidata. This visualization is almost unseen. Mm -hmm. You can see if I can get the light off here. Sorry, you, I can't. Um, you'll I think you find the link later to it. I'm sorry, it's a little bit hard to see. But those are the, um, the metro stations of Hong Kong and how they're connected with each other. So what you see here uh, is basically the airport coming into the city, driving down to Kowloon, which is in this area, and going over here to Hong Kong Island, and uh, the lines over there. So the, the metro, the island line is here, and here going to the new, um, up all over to Shenzhen, and here into the new territories. So also just taken from the data. A beautiful demo that I would love to show if the web allows me is a talk page. What the talk page does is you can actually ask questions into the browser. It tries to um, pass the questions and then look up in Wikidata what information we have. So let's see if this will work. Where was Jackie Chan born? Mostly when I say that it doesn't really understand what I'm saying. Let's try another one. <coughs> Who is the father of Luke Skywalker? Sorry for spoiling <laughs> um, The thing about this is, well, you saw the demo with Siri, you saw the demo with the Google conversational search, right? This is nothing really exciting. The actual thing here is, first, you can go to this page uh, on Wikidata and change it, it will immediately reflect it. You can't do this with the knowledge bases in Siri or in Google. And second, this has been done by a single developer in the course of three evenings and in the free time. So basically less than a day of work. And um, I think this is the, what the really amazing thing is that now with Wikidata, we have a knowledge base available for, to everyone um, to use in any way they want. And now Kunal will introduce you into the community of Wikidata next. Uh, 
is uh, this is some data prepared by um, Eric Dante, and um, what it shows is if you look, this is the rate of new contributors coming to Wikidata, and it's continuously growing. But what the short um, bar graph says is the number of new contributors, like new to the Wikimedia um, website, and uh, it's right now at a, it's over 1,000 new users coming in, uh, which is a lot. Um, and so these are just some like general statistics. Um, so right now um, we have around 4,000 active users, um, and we have 75 different bots that are running around doing various things, importing uh, segments, adding labels, um, adding statements. Um, we have 86 uh, administrators, and on Wikidata, um, there's a lot of administrative tasks to be doing, like merging items, you know, deleting duplicates. And so the bar for adminship is actually pretty low. It's, it's actually no big deal to get um, to become an admin. So we like to try and have a lot. Um, we currently have four bureaucrats, and uh, they're on Wikidata. We don't have wiki projects. We have task forces, and they're 37, and they they're from all ranges, from the Solar System Task Force to the Pokemon Task Force. So, um, and as of August 1st, the Wikidata database itself is 106 gigabytes, so you can still keep it on your laptop, but not for long. Um, on Wikidata, our main policy is use common sense, and it's basically our version of ignore all rules. Um, but it doesn't encourage like people to be reckless and say, no, I'm just going to ignore everything and do what I want. But it's that you should use your common sense and uh, basically if there's something that's written in like as a guideline that is preventing you from doing what actually makes sense, just do it and we'll fix the guideline later on. Uh, one of the big uh, issues and debates that we have is notability. Um, what should we put in Wikidata? What should be kept out? What should we just link to as an external database? And so far we have some like guidelines. And the first is that the policy is intentionally vague and that will come up with new rules as we go on. Um, the first like major rule was that user pages are not allowed. Um, on the foundation's roadmap is that we'll eventually have like global profiles, so that's what we're hoping for. But user pages don't really contribute anything to Wikidata and they don't add any value. Um, there's like a slight exception to like project-based essays that are just in user space, or like some Wikipedias have their wiki project pages in user space, so those are allowed. Um, Non-free images um, are not allowed because they can't really be used reliably on all Wikipedias. We want to have data um, that any Wikipedia can use, but if it's a non-free image, that doesn't help to that. Um, some items are explicitly excluded, like category redirects, which like the software uh, normally excludes redirects, but category redirects are special, so we've uh, excluded that, or they're like redirects from typos or uh, that kind of stuff. Um, and there are structural items, like anything that's needed to complete a tree. So when some of the people started working with the genealogy stuff, and we'd find that there'd be certain people in the family tree that no one had ever written an article about them, so you would have an incomplete family tree, and there'd be one generation that would break your entire tree. And so what we, we amended the policy so that um, if you needed to create an item to fill a tree, and sometimes in like uh, biology articles, like the genus wouldn't have an article, but the species did, and it would break the tree. So that way any kind of structural item uh, can be created. Um, another big topic is sourcing. Um, what the sourcing interface was added after um, statements came in, so there's been a lot of uh, discussions about like what needs sourcing and how we should source them. And um, so there are some guidelines that are in process at, at that help page. And um, one of the major things we're waiting on is the implementation of the URL data type, because right now we can link to books um, or like papers, papers, but we can't link to websites. Um, and one of the other things that's come up a lot is we have a, we have a, a source that says like imported from English Wikipedia. And it's mainly used for bots that are just mass importing statements from uh, various info 
boxes or categories, and it at least provides like some location of where the data came from, so you're not completely lost as to why you know some bot added like a statement that doesn't make sense at all. Uh, and so eventually, like the goal is that that statement, someone will come along and remove that statement and add a proper, reliable source. But for now, it just serves as a placeholder of where the data came. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that's come up recently is the usage of a main type property. Um, Wikidata currently has a property which is number 107, um, and it is, the, is based off as a modified version of the GND main type. And uh, because bots have been importing it a lot, they've uh, been using it when importing statements, um, it's currently used over 4 million times and is the most used property on Wikidata. And um, so far, there have been two deletion requests for it, and both of them have closed as no consensus because there's clearly like two very strong viewpoints that people will hold one or the other. Um, so there's currently an open uh, request for comments about this issue. And I'm basically trying to sum up both the both sides of the arguments. Um, and in favor, people who are in favor of it believe that Wikidata can essentially have as many like main types as we want. We just need to create properties for them. So there would be a GND main type, and if someone else has their own main type, it's, we just create a property for that. Um, and then some of the arguments against that is the implementation as it currently stands forces data to be categorized into seven seemingly arbitrary types and doesn't have any advantages over the system of using an instance of property and a subclass of property. Thanks, Kenan. So, where are we? A few numbers on the state of Wikidata. Within the last year, since the last Wikimania, we have removed 240 million language links from the Wikipedias. This means 240 li million lines in the Wikipedias that have not to be maintained anymore. It, have not to, it cannot be um, vandalized anymore. That no one has to look at anymore because they are simply not there anymore. One of my fears was actually that because of so many removed and so many links in some Wikipedias, we will see a drastic decline of uh, content. So because actually in some Wikipedias last year, those language links constituted more than 50% of the content. And uh, they're now gone. But actually, every single Wikipedia that I checked has grown in the last year more than uh, we have removed from it. So no big break there. Thanks for the Wikipedias. <laughs> In the last half year, 17 million statements have been created, meaning connection between items or information about geo coordinates, about times, and so on. It doesn't sound like too much if you consider that other knowledge graphs are much huger, but this is one of the biggest freely available knowledge graphs that we can edit out there. We have 3,900 active editors, as Kumal already said. That ranks us as the sixth most active Wikimedia project. The only, more, uh, the only projects that are more active than us is the English Wikipedia, Commons, French, the German, and the Spanish Wikipedia, and we're up there together with the Russian and the Japanese one on K6. And this is an amazing, um, amazing jump within such a short time. We have brought into the Wikimedia universe 1,300 new active Wikimedians who have not been before on any of the Wikipedia projects, but have started working on the on Wikidata. So this is also, um, considering that we have around 80,000 at all, this is an increase by 1% um, on the database for doing something as fancy as structuring data. And finally, we had more than 66 million edits within the last, um, since we started Wikidata, which is an extreme growth, but this number doesn't really compare to the other Wikipedias. So this has to be taken with a caveat, because what an edit in Wikidata is obviously much more fine-grained than an edit in, um, uh, in the Wikipedias. Also, this number has to be taken with a grain of salt, because as you heard, a lot of the edits on Wikidata are done by bots, right? So I mean, it's easy to create 66 million uh, bots, uh, 66 million uh, bot edits. But on the other hand, which might so what you see here is the edits of human editors alone. And they actually have every single month between 800,000 and a million edits by human editors. So anyone who tells you that uh, Wikidata is created only by bots 
Well, it's true that about 80 to 90 percent of the edits are coming from bots. But it's also true that we have about a million edits every single month done by human editors. So I think this is a fairly active project. So what's next? Well, so we will have the URL data type coming up next. It would already be there, if not for Wikimania, actually. Um, we need just a few finishing touches. It will be probably there by the end of the month. The text data type allows us to enter small pieces of text together with the language. So no, not to scare the legal team, it's not meant to be for whole paragraphs, but only for small pieces of text. Um, we want to allow Wikivoyage to access the data. Currently, Wikivoyage has access to the uh, language links, so the, um, basically all of the language links from Wikivoyage has been already removed, and but they will also get access to uh, the actual data inside of um, Wikivoyage. Um, a big thing will be the querying by property and value. So what you currently can do in order to access data from Wikidata is to ask for a single item and how it's represented, or for a number of items. What you cannot do is, for example, to ask for everything located in Hong Kong, or for ask for the book, or for something that has the uh, specific ISBN number. So this will be covered by this API, which is going to come in the next few uh, weeks or months, and will allow us to access um, an item, for example, a foreign key. We will have sorting of statements. Currently, the statements are simply um, uh, sorted by the way they are entered into the system. Um, sorting will allow for a nicer human um, accessibility of the set page. And we will be able to rank statements. So one of the things is that currently every statement is the same, but we want to be able to say some statements are deprecated. You might have good sources for us, but really we don't want to use this data. Or you might say that some statements are preferred. For example, you might have a lot of population numbers for a city, uh, but many of them are historical. And if you ask for all the cities with um, a population of under 100,000, you don't want to find Hong Kong in this list just because Hong Kong did have a population of under 100,000 in 1780. And so we have to be able to actually um, rank those statements and filter by those facts. And currently, you can only access Wikidata data on the page of its item itself. So you can access data about Hong Kong on the page for Hong Kong, you can access data about China on the page for China, but you cannot access any data from another item than the associated one, and you want to change that, which is actually a bigger change at the back end for updating stuff. So um, and this will be a big thing, because then you can access, for example, bibliographical metadata for a uh, for a reference on Wikipedia, from Wikipedia, uh, from Wikidata, and have the author, have the publication data, so only entered once in Wikidata and access it on all the pages of Wikipedia. And finally, we want to support more sister projects. And uh, this is going to be a big thing, and this, is, this can become arbitrarily difficult for different projects. Okay, so those are the small steps. Uh, but what you probably really want to know is what's the next, back, what's the next big thing, right? So those are the things that you will see in the foreseeable future. And the next big things that we want to support, if we, um, if we can, if we have the opportunity, is basically to support Wikimedia Commons, which means to provide um, uh, metadata about the actual files inside of Commons. So this probably will not happen on Wikidata itself. We won't have the metadata on Wikidata and the images on Commons. But rather, we want to extend comments in a way that supports holding the metadata about the images there. There is a proposal up for discussion right now, and everyone who is interested in Wikidata and comments or is interested in comments and structured data <coughs> is very, very welcome to comment on this proposal. The second complicated and uh, big uh, project is Wiktionary. Wiktionary is very different from the Wikipedias and requires a different sort of support than um, Wikipedias do. And we had, to die, we had today a discussion about um, how to support Wiktionary. We, we will continue to have those discussions. We don't have yet settled on um, how to support what it would look like in order to provide the dictionaries with access to structured data. But this is, uh, and this is also like a mid-term project. This won't start this year. This might start next year. This might start um, a bit later. Commons is first, obviously. And um, but we would really like to support lexical data information inside of the data. Um, query study solutions, and this is a very nice one. So 
whenever we have a query, for example, for, for the 10 biggest cities in a country, or for all the places where popes have been born, you don't want just to get a list of it. You actually want to visualize those lists. You want to make a map out of them. You want to make a timeline out of something. And you maybe want to even make it interactive and display it inside your Wikipedias. So you want to have graphics inside Wikipedia. You want to have interactive features inside your Wikipedia articles that allow you to filter through the data, that allow you to view the data in different ways, and that are kept automatically up to date based on the data inside of Wikidata. So the next is the interactive visualization. I already talked about it next. And who knows? Maybe one day we would also display something for articles that are not available in this Wikipedia yet. So for example, if you search for um, a small French village and uh, so I hid in Wikipedia, they probably won't have the article there, but you might display something in lieu of that. You might display some data from Wikidata combined with a local template and show you some data, for example, and then allow to start editing an article out of that easily, for example. But this is all still in an idea stage, so that would be really lovely, and it would replace a number of uh, um, a number of reasons why current bots, for example, create a huge amount of um, articles. Um, we could support a multilingual Wikipedia with the data that we have there. I sent in a proposal recently on the website, I'm not going into the details there. And also we could go for maybe a someday, um, um, a someday to infer knowledge out of the data. So we're so we creating more and more data, but actually if you have this kind of information, if you know, for example, this person is born in the city, and the city is in this country, you could also actually infer that this person is born in this country, maybe this nationality, guessing at, or something like this. Creating those kind of rules between the data and how they're connected, and getting more information out of that than is actually originally entered. But this is a very, very hard question, and I think this should be left once we understand how Wikidata and the community are working together in a much deeper way than we currently do. And finally, who knows? Maybe we can answer questions that were asked to uh, Wikidata. Maybe we can. You have seen the one that we already displayed, um, uh, Viri, where I was asking about the father of um, uh, Luke Skywalker. This was a very simple implementation based on explicit pattern mentioning in the sentence. And hopefully we can come to some solution that provides for a more flexible alternative, uh, for more access to the data in different ways, and finally leading to something like uh, an open AI, in the real sense of an AI, that we all work together and share it into it, that we all can participate uh, in. But this is kind of not next year, so it might take a while for that. <laughs> but those are just ideas, basically. And I would really appreciate for everyone to join us in the people. Thank you for your attention. So I hope you will stay for the rest of the session. Next will be Daniel talking about the technology inside of Wikidata. And after that, we will have the opportunity to ask us as many questions as we want. We will have plenty of time for that. Thank you for this great presentation. Uh, I'm afraid mine is going to be a little bit boring in comparison. Uh, really, all I want to do is give you a little bit of background on the technology before we start the QA session, because it might, it might come in handy to um, know about some of the core concepts um, and some of the plans we have. I mean, Wikibase now is already quite useful, but it's still lacking quite a few things. And in order to talk about them, I think uh, it's necessary to, to understand what we are building on. One of, one of the first things, one of the first things um, I developed for uh, Wikidata, really before the, the project itself started, was the, the content handler. And the content handler is really uh, a, co a facilitated core that allows us to get away from the assumption that everything in a wiki needs to be wiki text. Um, having this means that we can actually represent any kind of content in the wiki and treat it as wiki content. Have diffs, um, <coughs> have, in, of course, on-site editing, have page histories, have, have a watch list, and so on. So we are no longer stuck 
with just text. And this, of course, allowed us to store structured data as we see with the Wikidata items on wiki pages. The editing part, however, for structured data uh, requires a little bit more, well, complex user interaction. It simply does not make sense to ask people to edit a complex JSON structure or edit XML by hand. And similarly, it does not really make sense to develop an, an extremely complex um, user interface for editing everything on, on uh, a data item at once. So what, what we ended up doing is um, we wrote little widgets that lets you edit individual pieces of a data item, like a label or a site link or a statement or a source. And um, these are directly backed by individual API modules. This also, of course, allows, it, uh, allows bots to relatively easily create and modify data items. But the entire editing um, is API-based, and in contrast to Wikipedia, where the main editing, the, the main way to edit, of course, is one big text field, um, and even the editing API is, to some extent, based on the same code that actually drives the text field. Uh, this is, I think, something to keep in mind when thinking about how to interact with um, with Wikidata or any Wikibase site. Sitelink integration. Well, um, site links are the Wikidata perspective on language links, right? From the perspective of uh, Wikidata, these are links to just sets of sites. And um, this, of course, is the first thing that Wikipedians probably saw and noticed about uh, Wikidata, that suddenly the language links would vanish from the wiki text that would be coming from Wikipedia. And um, the way that this works is that when the page is parsed, we simply look up the site links on Wikidata, the, the site links of the respective item on Wikidata, and simply pretend that they are in the wiki text. This is how things currently work. This has this is very simple, right? It, integrates nicely with the way things currently work in, in, uh, in MediaWiki. But it also has one big downside. It means that every time the site links change, we have to reparse the page to basically integrate the new links, even though the content of the page didn't even change. And parsing is expensive, so this is not very nice. So what we plan to do, and sadly it turned out, this is the, the nitty gritty details of this are really kind of nasty, and it, it takes quite a bit of effort, but what we plan to do is Hook in when the don't hook in when the page get, gets parsed, but hook in when the uh, language links get displayed in the skin, and just pull them in just in time. This ne this means reading them from somewhere else. They are not stored along with the random text anymore. They are also no, no longer stored in the local database as language links that are on that page. But it means that we no longer have to re-render the page whenever such a thing changes. That's just like a, a minor optimization perhaps, but it's pretty important for, for keeping the site running. Especially uh, when we consider that we will see a lot more edits once the content of individual data items gets, gets richer. Statement transclusion is basically the fancy word for using the information we have on Wikidata on uh, wiki pages on Wikipedia and Wikivoyage and whatever. Um, this is done by actually accessing individual statements, or actually all statements for a given property. So basically you say, okay, give me whatever Wikidata has about, I don't know, the, the parents or the locations of this place, right? Give me the, the location or um, give me what municipality this is located in, or give me all the children, or something like this. Um, the simplest way, of course, to do this is uh, using a parser function, um, but this gives you very little control over how this is displayed. You will get a list of texts, but perhaps if you ask for the children, you really want these to be links to the respective wiki pages. So instead of trying to make this work, 
with the rather cumbersome project function syntax, we decided to just provide a Lua binding to our data structure and um, let people just work on that structure directly and use it in any way they see fit. Now, that is very flexible and powerful, but it's also quite inconvenient. So one thing that I really hope to see emerging um, is a nice Lua library that allows high-level access to um, the information on Wikidata that basically just covers the functionality that people commonly need when writing Wikipedia articles and similar things. Um, yeah, ideally, this would actually be done by the people on the wiki who are already active in developing um, Lua libraries and who are, who are active in developing templates because they know best what they need and they have the most experience with actually using Lua. Uh, we as the, the back-end developers basically, or also the JavaScript front-end UI developers, really don't have that experience, at least usually we don't. Okay, now for something completely different. If you want to use the data not on a wiki page, but you want to actually integrate it with some other source of information, then you really want to use the linked data interface. Linked data basically means we export our data in a well-defined way. We give predefined, um, no, we, get well, we give well-defined and stable identifiers to every item. Um, formatted as your eyes. <laughs> did, did I miss something? Yes. Why? <laughs> your, oh, your IRC is open. I thought I made a terrible spelling mistake. <laughs> that, that would not be uncommon for me. <laughs> right. Um, Okay, so the idea here is to provide an interface that makes it easy for other systems to retrieve the data and to navigate the data in a way that is compatible with other um, linked data repositories. And one of the main things we have to do with, for this is to first make a distinction of the identifier for a thing from the identifier of our description of that thing. So we have a document about Douglas Adams, which is obviously Q42. Wow, what just happened? Um, and we also have an identifier for Douglas Adams himself, uh, which is also, Q, also Q42, but the URI uses the prefix entity instead of the prefix wiki. Wiki would point to the HTML document entity well, if you actually enter this into your browser, you will in the end also get the HTML document because your browser is telling us, well, I want HTML, and then you will get it. But in terms of identifying things, these two are not the same, and that's a pretty important distinction. Um, in terms of output performance we support, um, we support quite a variety. We support everything that the API supports, like JSON and XML, um, but we also support RDF, in different serializations, um, which should make it easy to reuse our data. However, this the, the RDF mapping is still incomplete. So right now you will not yet get the most interesting stuff, which is the statements. Right now you just get labels and descriptions and so on, uh, site links too. Um, yeah, I hope to get around to that pretty soon. It's so hard to decide which of the many features we are still lacking is most important and which to implement first. Change propagation, right? When Wikipedia uses information that is maintained somewhere else, Wikipedia has to be notified. I, actually, I should say Wikipedia and Wikivoyage by now and later other, uh, um, other sites too. But it, basically when you use information from somewhere else, and you don't want to re-render the entire page every time it is skewed, which would be pretty terrible in the case of Wikipedia. Um, you have to be notified when the source changes, right? So if you use the population of Hong Kong, um, if you take that from Wikidata, and that pit number is updated, you kind of have to re-render um, the page about Hong Kong. 
the, the question then is how to do that in an, in an efficient way. And the way we do it is we write the change into a table similar to recent changes. And then we have a script that looks at this table in, in regular intervals and then figures out which change is relevant to which client wiki. And then posts something to that wiki's job queue which causes the respective pages to be re-rendered or the respective changes or the necessary changes to be made to that target wiki's database. Sometime in the future, we hope to support the same thing for third-party client wikis. Right now, this requires direct database access, so we can actually just inject things into the job queue of the target wiki. But, um, well, to do this for third-party wikis, we kind of have to support this via HTTP, perhaps using uh, PubSub Hubbub. But yeah, this would be nice, but it's still pretty far away. Actually, one thing that was not mentioned yet, and I perhaps should mention here, is um, when something like this happens, and re reparsing the page is one thing, right? But perhaps uh, the Wikipedia authors or the, the, the authors on the respective wiki actually want to know about this too, right? Something changed on the page, it's out of their control, and they want to check it, they want to see it. Um, this is why we, when we re-render the page, we also inject something into the recent changes table on the target wiki. So this change will actually show up in the recent changes feed. It will also show up in your watch list if you watch the page. And you will see it like any other local edit, and if you cl click on the diff link, you will just go to Wikidata and see the Wikidata diff. So this is kind of, I think it is pretty important to integrate this. And is it, it is the main argument against uh, the fear that once this data is no longer maintained inside Wikipedia, where there's a big community of people watching out for vandalism, watching out for spam, um, the, um, such things can then creep in. Now I think, actually, it is easier to spot because there are more people watching from more wikis because all the wikis that use this information are notified at, notified at once. I should have made a screenshot for that. Too bad. Right. One of the next things that we actually need, but Denny already talked about this, is allow people to um, access information from any data item on any page. I will not go into this now because, yeah, then it already covered it pretty well. So. Queries, well, then you also talked about this. Maybe I can add a few bits. In the beginning, you will be able to search for a single value. So one property having one value. Anything located in city X, for instance, or all the children of someone. What you will hopefully be able to do at some point is um, chain this kind of queries together. So you can get like all the mayors of all the cities in that country. And also intersect things like, give me all the city in that country that have a population larger than X. So these are the basic the, the, these two kinds of more complex queries are basically the next the next step. Um, one other very nice thing, of course, is uh, or would be to be able to have queries based on geo coordinates. So give me anything close by, or give me anything close to some location. Um, this is also something that we plan to or hope to have pretty soon. Um, it's still unclear what, what uh, system we will use for this. Um, I have not really researched this. I mean, Katie would be much more qualified than me to talk about this. Um, as far as I know, Solar has support for this. I know PostGIS does. Oh, it's the purpose of PostGIS. Uh, I don't know how um, much support uh, Elasticsearch has for this. It's still unclear what, what backend we're going to use for this, but it's one of the things we really want to have. Right. That's a very quick run uh, through 
all the technology or through the basic technology we, we are using to um, make Wikidata happen. And I hope it will give you um, well a better a better understanding of the project and allow you to ask even more questions. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, Daniel. I would ask to um, Yaron, Katie, Rudia, um, I would also ask Kunal to come up here and Ruben, who should also come up here, um, and give them applause. That's not, just some of the people who have been developing Wikidata in the last few years who are actually doing the work on the whole thing. So. Come up here. And uh, this is not a complete team, obviously. We didn't fly everyone here um, from Germany. So, um, and I also want to thank uh, every single one who has contributed to Wikidata, especially the developers, but also every single one in the community. Thank you very much for that. While we are, um, Grab the seats and sit down, you look like you're uh, okay. <laughs> you will have uh, who of you are sporty? In here, are you sporty? <laughs> and who else? Uh, would you go? Just take us to the people uh, asking questions. Oh, yes, yes, just do that. Commons. 
uh, with respect to managing metadata about uh, media files, um, which is a bit more complex. Um, please find it on comments and, and read it and comment on it. I'm very interested. Um, I think it would be quite important to be able to store things like the authorship, creation date, licensing, and so on um, for files. But even more importantly, it would allow us to assign or assign, assign Wikidata items as topic descriptions, which essentially amounts to tagging, just that these tags would be language independent. You can add your tag in English, and someone searching in Chinese will find it. That will be awesome. That will take a lot more time. So adding um, stuff to comments is really scheduled for after the data types are finished and everything. And also there's a multimedia team with the foundation, which we want to cooperate very, very closely on that. And so this will probably, so for the, for, for the second part of what Daniel said, this is probably planned for next year, in the, but pretty early there to be start and develop. But it will simply take a little bit of time. In the meantime, we will propose a comment on it. Really commenting at this stage has the biggest effect. I know that people usually prefer to comment once something is deployed, but this is pretty late for development. <laughs> Thank you. What you see in the back end now is developed by Stephen Laporte, by the way. It's um, this place you edit on Wikidata, and we actually redeveloped it for Wikipedia, but now it's place edits for Wikidata and um, that are going on right now. Hi there. Uh, I'd like to know what are the implementations uh, taken to handle cases of uh, political dispute names, uh, especially so, certainly in Hong Kong and uh, China and Taiwan. There are places, there are cases which we want to name some place or some other countries um, using different different Chinese characters of a certain country. And I want to know if there are if there are information implementations you guys have taken to handle the use of different translations in the same language under different, you know, contexts. You know, just like in Chinese Wikipedia, we have a Chinese translation of using regional terms for, you know, Taiwanese, Chinese, mainland Chinese, Chinese, Hong Kong Chinese, Chinese. Is this kind of integrated into the Wikidata? So we actually have a Google Summer of Code student working on, um, and, and she has a lot of experience, she's, a Ch she's Chinese herself, and she has a lot of knowledge about different languages and how to convert them into each other. And she's developing a part that can partially deal with that. So labels, there will be only one for each item in a given language. That's, um, that's won't be, this won't be changed. But you can add a property that says official name or something like this, and then you can have several different values for it based on different sources. So you can say this official name of, for example, Taiwan, according to the, uh, to the People's Republic is this, and the official name of Taiwan according to um, the Republic of China is this. <coughs> so, you, so you can deal with this kind of inconsistency, but in the end, it's completely up to the community how they want to decide to do that, and this is potential for conflict. But it's the same thing as with Wikipedia. Okay. So one of the things, like this issue's come up before when there was a discussion of whether to call it, um, what are the, I think it was like Super Storm Sandy or whether it was like the Northeast Blizzard or whatever year. And uh, there was like, people were changing labels back and forth. And um, what we ended up doing, it was just kind of just a rough, like what, was, what label was being used more predominantly through the Wikipedias uh, compared to um, what, like, we basically just took the label that more Wikipedias were using, so it wasn't. It may have not necessarily been like the best uh, choice, but it was probably the most fair. And that way, we didn't necessarily put our own. Um, we didn't label it the way we thought it was. It was kind of like sort of the most neutral way of deciding. Okay. Re really quick, maybe. Um, it is true that there's only one label per language, but this includes language variants. So Taiwanese, Taiwanese Chinese would have, could, can have a separate label. Brazilian Portuguese? Yes. Okay, I have several questions, but I'll stick to a few. Um, assume I build a KitS AI application that 
across on PG data and the Hitler servers with 10,000 requests per second, what will happen? Okay. And I assume I get a certain quality of service from your servers. So first, we also provide dumps of the whole data. So you don't necessarily have to query live for everything. And that's actually what a number of companies already do. They basically keep it not dump and have a live mirror with it. So this would be also much, much faster for you because you don't have to make an HTTP request every time you want to access one thing. So, uh, but basically, um, the Wikimedia Foundation kind of deals with a lot of bits per second anyway. So uh, yes, you can make uh, uh, you can ma make too many hits, but it will take a while to get there. Oh, the API, in fact, has a built-in front-end capability that will kick in once uh, the this live server start lagging. Okay, and uh, one more question, please. Um, there has been a semantic wiki where the, um, the semantic annotation is in the wiki. Now you have moved percentilized model. Um, that seems weird to me from this perspective. Move it from a decentralized model to a centralized model. Can you tell us something about that? Sure. Uh, you <laughs> well, okay, since I've been both the developer, um, like, I'm okay. Actually, Yaron is the uh, current uh, development boss and we began. I've been studying the whole thing, and um, back then, this was years ago. Um, this comes actually from long discussions inside of the community, with people inside of the community and everything. And uh, one major influence for this decision of one centralized was actually Eric sitting here in the front. And, um, the, and the major idea is uh, to have a common knowledge base accessible for all languages, but with built-in functionality for diversity seems to be a much more scalable way to actually provide access to our knowledge to all of the Wikipedias. If we would require the Tagalog is even a big one, I'm looking for a very small language. If we would require the uh, I don't know <laughs> something that has a hundred articles. If we would require them to create a knowledge base first and to understand the whole technology stack and everything. I'm not sure that this would be helpful in order to uh, come closer to our mission in an in appreciable time. And having it in centralized space leads to more eyeballs per fact, leads to less vulnerabilities, leads to less errors. I have a question. So I'm I'm on Wikidata right now, and I just added a new uh, a new item, and it just gave me a sort of a blank experience and. Once I figured out that I could choose instance of, and I chose book, um, that was it. And now I have to go through and you know remember to add author and maybe remember to add an ISBN. Um, are these things not structured to know that if it's an instance of book, then these are all the properties that belong to that type of? No. No. <laughs> Essentially, the answer is no because this uh, the system has no knowledge of the instance of property. That's in the property like any other. Um, it's user defined, and there is simply nothing the system does special about it. So um, as I look through, just a second. Uh, the, the approach we are currently exploring, and there is a Google Summer of Code uh, Nilesh working on this, is to have uh, the system suggest properties, more properties on the properties you already added. So if you um, already added like something like a given name, uh, and you want to add another property, then the system may uh, suggest that. You <coughs> also get a, you also enter a family name or a birthplace or something like that. Um, basing this choice on the instance of would be really trying to implement a special, very special case into the system. I'm not sure whether this is worth it, but I understand that many people expect it to work that way. I've always had a lot of successes. So I work at Wikia. We've got over 300,000 Wiki communities. And I've always had successes when I stumble into a new community that I haven't edited on um, by attacking red link stuff, you know, missing data that someone has clearly identified needs to be there. So I would really recommend considering that. You know, give me a list of, of missing you know, known data types for this instance of that I can just go through and fill out. Yes, as, as Daniel said, we are building on something like this, but based on suggestions instead of based on strong schemas. Uh, this is also coming from the point that 
personally, I'm an extremely strong opposer of strong schemas in order to um, represent the whole of the knowledge of the world, because I simply think you run into so many edge cases, especially if you're doing something like Wikipedia, that uh, strong schemas and strong constraints won't cut it. And um, this is basically the single most stubborn decision that I have made in the project and I'm going to defend as much as I can. Uh, so one of the things we have done is if you go to the property page, if you go on the talk page, um, there's like a list of constraint templates. So it might say that like um, if you know if you add this property, that item should also have this property. And uh, those templates are read by a bot which scans every day's incremental dump. And so if you go to the, the database reports page and you scroll down to the constraint um, violations page, it has like a list of those items that may have like one property but are missing the other like related property. But yeah. And so but so that's like all done by users defining the properties and what the constraints should be rather than the software doing it. There's there's um I mean I'm also very worried on about um, implementing anything like this into the software itself, but there's like the, the there's like a nice place for software to be that is not like on the server, right? You can have uh, user scripts and gadgets and things like that, which can take advantage of like community specific knowledge and wiki specific knowledge. And I could imagine a gadget that would react to someone setting the instance off. Uh, property and then suggesting things. I, actually, I think that would be cute, but well, I don't know whether Daniel would like it. <laughs> it's a gadget, it's fine. I just don't want it to be baked in part of the system. Yeah. Yes, uh, as a Wikipedia user, I'll uh, uh, my that, uh, previous uh, question. Uh, as there are, there's a documentation page uh, like name tools, and there are some user scripts listed which help similar functionality like, like about, about uh, people or the draft copies. There are some suggestions for these properties. And uh, my question would be uh, is it possible right now to use in Wikipedia in a template namespace uh, to get uh, this data from Wikipedia? So I make uh, access the data in template and I put in article page uh, there's already a list of uh, some data which shows up is it possible right now? Um, yes, that is already possible. You can use data from Wikidata on the Wikipedias and soon hopefully also on Wikivoyage. Um, if you are interested in important pages uh, on Wikidata that you should probably have a look at if you want to get involved, there's flyers down here that you could uh, grab after the session, uh, which has links to the most important pages. Uh, sorry, uh, just came to my mind. Is it possible to get rid of that small advice that asks you every time uh, to uh, to accept the CC0 <laughs> license? Please. <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I am an administrator on Wikidata. I surely accept the CC0 <laughs> license. I mean. It's, it's a bug currently. It's, it's, there's a bit of a bug currently. We're working on it. Well, it will be displayed once, but you should it should be able to, once you say yes, I accept it really, that it doesn't appear again and yeah, again. Yeah. We're working on it. We're working on it. Thank you. I think the way it is, like, don't change your language, but that's the way you're supposed to be. It will be fixed, hopefully, very soon. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, I was in the uh, uh, open access um, uh, talk, talk and uh, apparently there is the need of talking uh, authorship in, uh, in Wikipedia of uh, uh, researchers or contributors that want uh, their identity associated with uh, their contributions. Uh, so apparently it seems that uh, Wikidata could be the, uh, the entry to uh, connect with other projects. Uh, is there any possibility to have uh, some uh, connection with the uh, user identity in Wikipedia? So, could 
currently there's nothing special built in, but there would be no problem to, for example, once we have, for example, the, um, the, uh, the central unified logins, to actually create a property saying, for example, Wikimedia username, and then it would be, or you have everything there what you need for that. So Danny, you talked earlier a little bit about some of the future possibilities for Wikidata, and you talked about commons, and you talked about dictionary. Um, what I don't think you talked about as much is the possibility for Wikidata to be used as glue in a number of different ways in the projects. The obvious way in which it's used as glue today is for the language links, but even just when you type uh, a link to another page, for example, in the Bush Editor, potentially you could pull definitions from Wikidata. Um, there are many other cases like that, even going so far as potentially replacing the entire category system with uh, a tagging system based on Wikidata, not just for comments, but everywhere. Have you guys done a little bit of an audit or done some thinking around areas within the projects in which Wikidata could be used usefully to enrich the existing projects? We haven't done any structured uh, thinking about this, but I'm sure that all of us have done some thinking about it in specific cases. For example, one of my pet wishes would be for the search in Wikipedia to be replaced with our labels and descriptions because they're so much more useful than um, the current auto-completion is. And, um, and I think this would be a nice uh, small picture. But as you say, the visual editor provides opportunities for interact. Comments provide so many opportunities to interact with what we had here. And I'm sure, Katie, you have more. Well, well, I was going to say, um, like when uh, the English Wikipedia got use of uh, uh, like a parser function in Lua, um, it's like we were a little bit worried about, or they were worried about, oh, like people are just going to use this like so widely or whatever, but or like dive in. But instead, it, it's, um, we use the uh, uh, wiki data to compare uh, what was in like I think the info box like for a certain like thing against what was in wiki data, and then. They like flag with a category uh, like where it's like, different, so that people can go in it and check. Okay, they, like uh, for quality, uh, why this is, and like fix errors. So in this way, like like um, wiki data can help, help check check like against like other against wiki data or other versions of Wikipedia that um, that like the information is. It's more correct. Another thing that could be done very simply is uh, just treat sister links very similar to language links and just pull them in automatically. That would be rather trivial. Actually, it took me a day of coding to avoid that happening. Uh, you talked about uh, maps, how you should just press a button and suddenly you have uh, the same map in a different language. But maybe I didn't quite understand, what if it's like a really obscure language that doesn't actually have articles on all those fronts in India or whatever? Uh, can we still... The beauty of Wikidata is that we do not need the articles. All we need is translation of the label. So what we need in order for, example, we have a map like this, we have to provide the label, we have to have those labels in our language. And already now, we have um, <coughs> independent of language links that have provided for the first set of labels we have, we have more than five million further labels for the items that we have in Wikidata. So, and this is extremely quickly growing. And this is also actually an opportunity, for example, for a small tool for a website or a mobile tool, for example, it asks you, translate me this label and description into your language. You know it in, um, oh my god. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry for that. <laughs> it's an automatic system. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> Here's a new native, just provide us with this label. 
just provide us with this description. And so we can get for those labels and description very quickly, and then you can do these things. So if you just translate the labels, but it doesn't have an article, the system just automatically knows not to add the language things, right? Or it's a different... The language links and the labels are completely independent of oh. each other. Okay. Um, another thing that we are currently, Danny already mentioned it, but we are already trying to implement is uh, something like a language callback. So if you are trying to get um, <coughs> labels and some variant of a language and they are not all there, it will automatically go uh, try to find the label in like the, the main variant. And uh, in, in some cases, especially for place names, the, the fallback may even go deeper. Like you don't have the name in French for that town in in, um, in Scotland or whatever, we'll take the English label. Hello. Um, first, I'd like to thank you, all of you. And I'm from a very small uh, Wikipedia project, a very small Wikipedia. And your work really saved our ass. <laughs> and and uh, really, really, and uh, I'm very appreciate, especially the inter language uh, link, really help us. And because we only have uh, maybe a dozen of people active users, and your work is really, really save a lot of our work uh, to maintain all the uh, all in the wiki. And it's crazy. And uh, and uh, also, I prepared some questions, so I already handed to. Uh, May I interrupt you for a bit? Yes. This is why we've been doing this. <laughs> <laughs> what language is this? Uh, Candidness. Uh, you can read the question. Okay, the first question was, uh, one topic in language A is covered by one item article only, but is by more... Uh, only but it's by multiple items article in language B. What do we do about this? Okay, so uh, for now what we've been doing is they they get different items and uh, we just have we just let the the Wikipedia locally stores the correct language link that they want to because um, we don't really have a solution to this right now because they are two different topics, so they should have two different items. Um, eventually, it would be nice if there was a way you could say fault the site links should fall back upon this like somewhat related item, but that's not possible yet. So what we've been doing is the box don't remove those links, and so those are still stored in the page tags. Well, my question is, like, this is Ubia big problem in the long term because uh, in different language uh, well, I give you an example like in Cantonese uh, people older brother and younger brother get different name but in English it's just called name brother and, and so that's the simple uh, simple question and it may happen to Germany or other languages too I, I'm pretty sure and uh, and so and that would be a, a, a problem you guys need to think about. And, uh, I don't know how to do it with myself, but, uh, but do you have uh, any idea? Yeah, so maybe tackle the problem. Uh, one of the other like uh, solutions we had was allowing redirects in Wikidata, and so that if you like the, the older brother in Cantonese would redirect to an English Wikipedia article about. That. Would, would link to the English Wikipedia article about older brother, but that would just be a redirect to the actual article about brother. So the item would include the redirect, but the Wikidata software doesn't support that yet, and there's an open bug for it, so that's one of the things that is now on the software team's job. Right, um, and another question is, uh, your second question is basically the, the one we already answered, but in the other direction, so I'm going to skip this. Um, and the last one is uh, linking sections. In all interwiki links, you could link sections of an article in one language to another. Uh, can this be done? No. So the solution for that too is to create redirects to the section and eventually link to the redirect. Um, 
of a, a article or concept with the other, and if I need to put it very uh, technically. Let's discuss it in a smaller round. Yeah, I have a question. What do you suggest to uh, like how the new person can start it? I am trying to contribute uh, from last 10 minutes. So all the article, all the information I'm, I'm trying to add is already available. It's probably what's... Uh, um, I'm sure, for example, sources for most of the stuff you looked at do not exist. So go and add sources. People will love you. Okay. Also, I'm very sure that there's a lot of data you can add. Just think about your favorite TV shows, think about your books that you like and stuff like this. And probably you will find things like adding an offer to them, adding uh, publication dates and so on. It doesn't have to be about, about just go about the villages you know. I mean, so for example, my, my wife's village is available, so that's good. Uh, yeah. well, but there's other stuff you're interested in. There's, the world is so huge and you have so many interests. I mean, you're a Wikimedia, seriously. Um, <laughs> go, then you'll find stuff to add to Wikidata, I'm very sure. And if you don't, Wow. <laughs> okay, so, so if you pick up one of those brochures, there are like links to the introduction help page, and that has um, information on like where to contribute and where we need help. And like there are a bunch of task forces, there are like 37, that just like on the main page, they have a list of all these things that need to get done. And uh, as Katie was saying, that like most, um, most items don't have like well-formed descriptions. So if you read like the help page on how to create a description, you can just start describing things. And there, there are like task forces for, or there's like one task force that is for each language, and then just go in order from in the numerical order and add a label and description to every single item. And like right now, they have up to like 2,000 done. So, and I, I think there's a tool listed on the tools page uh, to like find items that don't have descriptions. So I remember like some like time ago, um, like. Uh, it's like Chinatown, uh, like since like we don't have uh, the same configuration like Wikipedia does, so there were there was like 50 items called Chinatown, and then when you like search for them, it just says Chinatown, and then like I don't know San Francisco, New York, or whatever. So it's like I just went through all of them and like added a description, and then when you go search for them again, the, the suggester like shows you Chinatown, and then beneath it the description. So. That makes it like, and just makes Wikidata far more useful, and that's something that's like hard for a bot to do. So, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So, everyone, thank you very much for being here. For paying attention. <laughs> uh, I have Wikidata stickers, so if you want them, come here, grab it. Those are for those who manage to stay until the end. Thank you for being here in a one and a half hour session. So, <laughs> and have a great Wikimania. <laughs> Join us. Right, um, and we're still here tomorrow if you want to talk to us or here after the session. Um, just grab one of us.
新拍照的时候，我们做加一下。中文翻译。